In this video, I'll show you how I installed a custom heated bed and flex plate system on the Mule Dex. The Mule Dex is an IDEX printer with a 300 by 400 millimeter bed. Since the bed is rectangular, the components are a little harder to find since the shape is not that common. But thanks to some really great sponsors, I was able to source the components. I'll be using a Mike 6 aluminum plate sourced from 3D Fused. 120 volt AC silicone heating pad from Kinovo and a flex plate systems from both BuildTech and Wham Bam. The bed on this printer is going to consist of a cast 6 aluminum plate. If you don't know, the advantage of using cast is that the grains of the material have not been cold worked like has been done on extruded aluminum and this reduces the internal stress of the material and allows it to be machined without warping. Cast comes from the mill machined to a flatness of about five thousandths per foot which is pretty flat. You still need to cut the perimeter of the bed which 3D Fuse did for me and they did a great job. It really looks beautiful. If you are not aware, 3D Fuse makes a really great printer called Creatos as well as some upgrade kits for some other mass produced printers. I'll post a link to the description if you want to check that out. Typically you'll see a 6 millimeter thick plate used for a 300 by 300 millimeter bed. But in my case my bed's going to be 400 by 300 millimeters. So I sized up the thickness to 8 millimeters to achieve roughly the same deformation as I would have on the smaller bed. With Inventor's FEA software, I was able to determine that the amount of deflection would be roughly 12 microns with a 6 kilogram part on the bed. The first thing I'm going to do is install this 120 volt AC Canovo silicone heating mat with a built in thermistor. I'll start by cleaning off the surface that I'll be mounting the heating pad on with 91% IPA. You want to repeat this process a couple times to make sure you have a nice clean surface to mount to. I'll start by revealing a couple of inches of the sticky side of the pad, making sure the first edge is perfectly lined up before continuing. Once the first edge is secured, I'll slowly peel away more plastic a couple of inches at a time until I get to the very end. Now that I have the heating pad installed, it's time to make a difficult decision. I have to decide which magnetic sheet to use, as I have two. I have built text magnetic sheet, which uses a bunch of neodymium magnets and has a MuleBot printed on it, and it looks amazing. I also have Wham Bam's magnetic sheet as well. The way I see it, both sheets have their own advantages. One thing to note is that BuildTex sheet is only rated to 120 degrees Celsius where Wham Bam's is rated to 150. This might be important to you if you print with high temperature materials. Empirically speaking, the strength of the magnetic sheet seems to be pretty similar between the two. One thing I would note is that the BuildTech bed has a nice metallic sound to it when you remove the sheet. The Wham Band's magnet is much more quiet. One thing that is not too important to me on this build but could be important to you if you have a bed slinger is weight. Wham Band's magnet comes in at just over 500 grams where BuildTex is less than half that at only 200 grams. One concern I have with BuildTex magnetic sheet is the possibility of cold spots. Where Wham Bam sheet continuously touches the flex plate, BuildTex only makes contact at the locations of the magnets. This means that the heat is only being transferred through the magnets, so it is possible that you'll get cold spots in between them. Another thing for cons comparison is the thickness. But in this case, both magnets were roughly the same thickness, measuring between 50 and 70 thousandths thick. Insulation is also the same for both sheets. They both stick to your bed in the same manner, utilizing a pre-installed adhesive. In the end, this was a very hard decision, which I contemplated for days. I decided to go with Biltex sheet strictly because it looks so great with the MuleBot head printed on it. 
Although mechanically speaking, I think Wham Bam She has merit too. Installing the magnetic sheet will be really simple. I'll start by cleaning it off with some IPA. I'll do this a few times to make sure I have removed all the oil. I'll install the magnetic sheet in the same manner as I did the silicone heater. I'll start by aligning one corner and peeling back the plastic as I go. Once I have all the plastic removed and the sheet secure, we'll be ready for the next step, which will be installing the strain relief for the heating pad. Now it's time to install the ground wire and the strain relief from the heating pad. The strain relief is 3D printed out of PETG, but I'm using a Garlite Spacer Standoff, which is a type of plastic used for thermal and electrical insulation. Hopefully the spacer will keep the heat away from the 3D printed part, but if not, I'll just change to aluminum strain relief. I'm also using this opportunity to run a ground wire from the bed to the power supply since it's electrically isolated from the frame. With the strain relief now attached, I'm going to wrap the cables in 3 8 inch slit loom wire wrap. The strain relief is designed to use two cable wraps to keep everything in place. The bed will be mounted on a kinematic coupling that will utilize three of these 10 millimeter ball ends with a four millimeter tapped hole. So I'll install those next. With those installed, the bed is now ready to be put into the printer. Man, I just love that magnetic sheet. This is the easy part because the balls just sit on the kinematic coupling, so no fasteners are required. Then I'm just going to need to feed the wires through the strain relief that's mounted on the back panel of the frame that I had previously mounted. Once all the wires are ran through the strain relief, I'll put them in the wire loom all the way from the bed to the back panel and finish it off with a couple of zip ties. I'm going to start off by terminating the ground wire, but as you can see here, it's too short to make it to the screw terminals. So instead, I'm going to utilize one of the threaded holes on the outside of the power supply. I'm going to terminate one of the white wires from the heating pad to the neutral terminal on the power supply. It does not matter which white wire you use. This is also where the incoming neutral is terminated, so I'm going to flip one of the spade terminals upside down so they both fit. The remaining white wire will be utilized for the load, which will be terminated at the relay, which I had previously wired. The two red wires are for the thermistor, which will be ran to the Duet or whatever printer controller you are using. At this point, I'll verify that the bed is properly grounded by putting my multimeter on conductivity and touching the bed and the ground pin, the IAC connector, to make sure I get a beep. Let's start attaching the build surfaces. I'm going to be installing a build tax sheet on their plate and a PEC sheet on Wham Bam's plate. Both plates are pretty sim similar and I'm unable to fill even the slightest burr on Wham Bam's plate, but I can fill a slight burr on the build tax sheet, so I'm going to get rid of that with a little bit of filing. Both sheets are roughly the same thickness. Build tax is uh, roughly around 22 and uh, Wham Bams is about uh, 18. Alright, just like I did before installing the magnetic sheet in the heating pad, I'm going to start off by cleaning the sheet with IPA. The PEC sheet is a little bit oversized, so you don't have to worry about getting it perfect. There's extra stock that can be cut off after it's installed. I'm going to start by peeling back an inch or two and then line that up with the first edge and then to continue to pull it back as I move along. 
I like the pack sheet. It makes it easy because it's clear and if you have any bubbles you can get them out as you move along. Then you just need to cut the little bit of extra off the outside. After peeling off the protective coating, the last part of the step is to wipe it down with some steel wool to help increase the adhesion. I'll install the build tack sheet in the exact same manner as the PEX sheet, so I'm not going to rehash it here. But take note that the build tack sheet is the exact same size as the flex plate, so take extra care when aligning that first edge. Also notice that the sheet is black and not transparent like the PEX sheet, so it's a little harder to see any bubbles that may arise between the sheet and the plate. With that, both sheets are installed and ready to be tried on the printer. I'm excited to have both of these plates in my arsenal as I think each build surface will have its advantage depending on what materials I'm printing with. If you're interested in my opinions of each of these flex plate systems, let me know and I'll work on a review video once I've spent some time testing them. I also have on order a powder coated PEI sheet but I did not receive it in time for this video. If you're interested in building the mule decks, I am told that both the powder coated sheet and the build tech sheet for the mule decks will be available to order. If you're interested in more information on the mule decks, stay tuned because I'll have more content coming soon.